Hi, my name is Alexander Watson. Um, I started here as a, an undergraduate student back in 2016. Um, I graduated in 2020 and uh, started pursuing my master's degree in mechanical engineering um, after that here at the University of Maine as well. Um, my research focuses primarily on the use of the desktop metal studio system for additive manufacturing of metal. Um, that uses the bound metal deposition technique to create parts. The studio system at UMaine is a part of the Center of Additive Manufacturing of Metals, or CAM for short, which is based at the Advanced Manufacturing Center. The mission of CAM is to provide support to Maine businesses for their needs in additive manufacturing of metals. The first step to producing a part is the part design. In CAM, we usually receive the computer-aided design, or CAD, model from the client. The 3D model is subsequently uploaded to the cloud-based slicer, which is where printing settings are applied to the part. Settings in the slicer can be modified to change things like the weight of the part, the strength of the part, the material type of the part, and the surface finish of the part. Once the part has been sent to the printer, it is started with the click of a button. The amount of time it takes to print depends on the part size and the settings chosen when slicing the part. The second machine in the desktop metal studio system is the D-binder. Um, the D-binder is used to remove most of the binder material from the part um, and then prepare it for the third stage, which is sintering. After the part comes out of the D-binder, the part is in the brown state and ready to go into the furnace. So the third machine in the studio system is the furnace. Uh, in the furnace, the part uh, gets uh, fully debound and then subsequently sintered. So the sintering process takes the metal particles and brings them together into a full metal part that's near full density. So it's almost 100% dense, uh, a metal part at that point. The first part of the furnace stage is a second debinding step where the remaining material holding the metal particles in place is heated and driven off. So once the part is printed and fully processed, uh, we can take it and use our ferro arm to scan the part and that scan data can be compared to the original CAD model that was used to make the part. So with this scan data, we can compare the part. Um, we can see where the part might be deviant from the CAD and use that to inform another process if we need to go through and print another one. The raw material for the printer comes in cartridges like these. Um, the main materials that we have for printing with are these two different types of stainless steels. So we have 316L stainless steel and 174PH stainless steel. And then this third cartridge contains interface media, uh, which is used to create uh, like a non-stick layer between the bottom part that gets printed and then the part itself uh, and that is needed um, to make the rest of the processes that come after printing possible. So the metal material is actually a it's a con combination of metal particles and wax and polymer which suspend those metal, metal particles into a rod kind of like a candle the wax polymer materials behave kind of like a, a candle wood, which can be melted at a much lower temperature than the metal itself. 
So when it prints, all of those materials will melt at a lower temperature, um, which means the printer itself doesn't have to get up to such a high temperature. And those metal particles will just flow through the material because they're so small. So the interface material comes in a similar rod uh, and it behaves very similarly, uh, except it's not metal which is suspended in here, but actually little ceramic beads. Um, and those ceramic beads will behave differently than the metal will. So here we're showing the part in two different stages. This is what the part looks like right after it comes off of the printer. And this is what the part looks like when it comes out of the furnace. So when it comes out of the printer, the part itself and the raft that it sits on are stuck together by the interface layers. So that's this white material that you can see uh, right underneath the part. After it comes out of the sintering furnace, that interface material turns into a powder and it can be removed by blowing on it or brushing it away. Um, and then the raft becomes separated from the part itself. So this is the actual part that we want. And this is the wrap that it sits on to enable those subsequent processes to be successful. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the Center for Additive Manufacturing of Metals here at the Advanced Manufacturing Center at the University of Maine. Um, I hope you consider CAM for your next metal 3D printing project. Thank you for watching.